start here in Levski. Uh, Glenn here is uh, in his easy hat. Let's get out of bed, Glenn. Well, you, you wouldn't expect Glenn to sleep in his space suit, would you? That's, that is so 2.6. So, uh, as, as you've noticed, Glenn is uh, in his um, you know, skivvies, so a sleeping outfit. Um, but in 3.0, three, in 3 we've, and this is quite different than what we showed last year, we have a, we have a completely modular clothing system, so you can dress however you want. There's, it, you know, previously it was like you either had your civilian outfit or your armor outfit. That's no longer the case in 3.0. You can do, uh, you know, any combination you want. So you can put whatever, different jacket, trousers, t-shirt, long coat, armor. You can mix and match different armor pieces, different helmets and everything. Uh, so let's uh, pull up our Moby Glass, Glenn. So the other thing you'll notice here, and in the Moby Glass, well, one of the apps will help us dress, but just to notice here in the Moby Glass, that's another big difference between what we showed last year and what we've put into the new 3.0, which is we've completely refactored the Moby Glass, which is your sort of, well, it's basically a smartphone in the future. And uh, here's sort of the home screen, which I think we've shown on a few ATVs, but just to go through it, obviously that's how much money we've got, 125,000 UEC. Um, you can see in the middle what a heart rate is. And uh, there's a, you know, we have this thing called the stamina system that we're introducing with 3.0, which tracks your stamina. So our heart rate indicates how, you know, how exhausted we can become. And so if we're running around a lot, that'll go up. Our stamina will go down. If we're injured, it potentially will go up too. Uh, and obviously, exerting yourself, running around, uh, affects that. Whether you're injured affects that. Also, what you're wearing affects that. What you're carrying affects that. Uh, so it's quite important uh, in terms of, I think, immersive gameplay. And then to the right, we can see the external atmosphere reading. At the moment, it's one atmosphere, and we have a breathable, breathable atmosphere. So the other thing that we've added to 3.0 is we track the atmosphere you're in. So in the case of Levski, there's a breathable atmosphere inside Levski, but it's on an asteroid, so if you go outside, uh, there is no breathable atmosphere. We also can track the composition of the atmosphere, which you can see there, so there could be an atmosphere, but poisonous to you, say, a human. So either you need to be in a breathable atmosphere or you need to be wearing a suit, space suit, environment suit, whatever, that has an oxygen supply or you will die. So that's not very good. Um, and uh, then you know, on the rest of the home page, if you've got your currently selected vehicle, you would have the status of that, uh, your track mission. And then if you had your suit, that would be the status of the suit, how much oxygen you've got, how much, uh, you know, what the suit's got, how much your tank's got. Uh, so here on the bottom are where all our apps are. So the first app on the top left is the contract manager. Now the contract manager is where you'll get the various jobs or missions, however you want to think of it, in the game. Big, big, big move, big uh, thing for 3.0 is we've completely moved away from the old missions that we've had and moved into Subsumption, which runs both our missions and our AI, AI, AI. so that's a ah, AI. So that's a that's a massive, massive undertaking. I think we had about 16 missions in 2.6. Uh, in 3.0, we have I think about 26 different archetypes of missions, and beyond that, they can be combined in different combinations. And there's a large amount of procedural missions. So literally. There can be millions of missions that you do in 3.0. It won't stop. So it's not like you have 16 finite missions you do and you and you're done. There's, you know, missions to escort, missions to deliver something to a location, missions to go and get something from a location, uh, missions to investigate a missing per, you know, like a, whether someone's dead on a wreck or not, identify them, uh, take someone out, clean up pirates, and there's these templates that can be put together in different combinations. And on top of that, we can also have some missions that will be created where there can be a mission for one player, and then another player is given a mission in opposition to that. Uh, so there's a lot of potential for 
ongoing gameplay in 3.0 that wasn't in 2.6, which is important because now we have persistence, and so you need to earn money to keep your ship repaired or to keep it rearmed. I mean, no longer free missiles or no longer free fuel and all the rest of the stuff. Well, you know, it's, that's a game. You've got to earn your money to keep your ship going. Um, so uh, there'll be much more of a game mechanic. So uh, here's where we would have the various, so like, for instance, this is just a simple one, a collection from Yella. Customer requires medical supplies, crates to be collected from an outpost on Yella and delivered to Port Alasa. So between this and between uh, trading, where you can buy commodities in one location, take it to another and sell it, uh, there is a, there's a whole sort of beginning of a dynamic economy that we can run. Um, so besides the, the various jobs that we can select here, there can also be offers that we're getting from uh, individuals. And by the way, in um, 3.0, it'll just be from the game and NPCs. But going forward, players will be able to also put missions up here and give off, you know, basically make offers to other players. Um, so let's see if we got any offers. So here we have, there's a job opportunity and uh, Eckhart Security, if everyone remembers Miles Eckhart from last year. Uh, so he is one of the two mission givers in 3.0. And uh, he says, another job's popped up. Thought you'd be a good fit. So we probably should go and talk to him about it. So we'll, we will accept that. Uh, and then if we have a mission that we've fully accepted, because we just accepted the offer to talk about it, we would have an accepted group. And then also the history of missions we've done in the past. Then the other sort of tabs we have is this one for our sort of repair, restock, refuel stuff if we were at a uh, cryastro station. Or you can also do that in locations like Levski or Port Alasar. Um, over here, the next tab will be the vehicle works. It's currently called Liveworks IR, but this is, you'll be able to modify and uh, change out equipment on your ship very much like you can in the Arena Commander app at the moment. Um, we also have a journal, although we haven't really done anything at the moment. Glenn is just beginning. Uh, and then uh, we have comms, which we'll show you in a little bit. Uh, and uh, star map, which we'll show in a bit. But and we'll go to the player manager app right here, uh, which is how we sort of organize our dressing. So we're in the skivvies. This is why we went to the movie glass in the first place. So let's put on uh, some trousers and some boots and maybe a jacket. There we go. Looking very fashionable to go outside. And you know, in 3.0, there's actually quite a lot of clothes that we've added for people to dress and customize themselves how they want. Um, all right, Glenn, let's, uh, let's uh, turn around. And one other sort of major interface feature that we've done, which we talked a little bit about in ATV, is what we call the player interaction mode. And uh, if any of you guys have been down on the show floor and played a little bit there, I think you've started to use it. But it's, every way, it's our unified way of interacting. So you hit F. And you move the mouse around, anything you can interact with will be highlighted. Uh, the action will have an inner thought. Potentially, there will be more than one action. Uh, and it's how you press buttons, open doors, pick up an item, uh, get an, uh, interact with your cockpit. So you no longer have to remember all these shortcuts. So when you're in your cockpit, there are physical buttons to do everything, like deploy landing gear, open the canopy, all the rest. So of course, there still will be the shortcuts. But for a new user experience, I think it's, it's much more, much more friendly. So here we are outside our Easy Hub. And one other small feature that we've added, which is, uh, well, there you go. Movement. Use mouse wheel up mouse to increase the speed. So we can control our movement speed uh, with the mouse wheel, which you know, in a, a PC FPS game, normally WASD, you're either running or you're not running. Uh, so this sort of allows us to uh, control our speed. So if we're in a social situation, we don't want to be running around, say, inside a bar. But when we want to get somewhere fast, like get to the bar, yes, we may want to run. And you may, and you also notice the hint system that came in. So the hint system is something else we've added to 3.0 to make the experience much more friendly for new players. We're hoping there'll be quite a few new people in 3.0. Um, and here, so we're in Levski. We we obviously saw this last year, but what we didn't see last year is. AI moving around, doing things, in that case, sitting down. I think if we look, yep, he's checking his Moby glass. Maybe there's a guy, there's a maintenance guy doing some work somewhere. Uh, oh, I guess not now. That's the, uh, 
nature of AI running around. There's about 200 AI running around Levski at the moment. Uh, and uh, it's the beginning of subsumption. Subsumption uh, AI is what we're using in Squadron 42 and we will be using in the PU. Uh, it's very much a Sims type AI. So people have schedules, they go to sleep, they get up in the morning, they go to work, they go get lunch, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all right, so let's go down. Uh, I guess if we follow him, we'll see he'll probably, uh, maybe he's going to use the, no, he's going to check it out. <laughs> Uh, he's going to get his little thing out, and he's going to do some work on it. There you go. All right, let's uh, let's go down to Cafe Musan. So in uh, in 3.0, there is sort of basic AI uh, moving around, doing things, shopkeepers, bartender, mission givers. Uh, but it's just the beginning of what we're putting on, and uh, it's going to be much more fluid and more sophisticated as you go down. Again, we use the uh, user interaction mode for everyone. Uh, here in, uh, we're in Delamar, there's, yeah, as you can see, there's a fairly big amount of change in the sort of space landscape. This is actually how uh, Delamar is meant to be. It's a, a very large uh, asteroid in a big asteroid field. So we have some pretty large asteroids up there. There's a couple that are 20 plus kilometers inside. And here we are at the, uh, the sort of the main market section, which uh, we walked through yes last year. And if you haven't noticed on the sort of lighting uh, and volumetric uh, fog, so every we've switched to volumetric fog, which we also had a uh, little piece on ATV, makes the lighting much, much, much better. So the sort of sense of my, the shopping shops are available throughout the Grand Bada. And one of the nice things, uh, so with 3.0, uh, like between this and last year, we filled out all the shops in Levski and added some stuff uh, in other places like Port Alasar. So for instance, there's shops for ship items and weapons. Um, but let's go and find Miles Eckhart. Um, so besides, besides uh, you know, clothing shops, armor shops, personal weapon shops, there's shops for ship items. And in the next release, 3.1, we will have ships that you can buy as well. And that will be the, the full amount, the trifecta. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna switch to Glenn's partner to find Miles because Miles seems to be missing for us. Glenn, are you down here? There he is. Hey, Glenn. All right. Let's talk to let's talk to Miles. Get our mission. Glad you could make it. Grab a seat. Time to time, jobs find their way to me that aren't orthodox requests. That's a better way to say that, but let's just say they aren't the kind of ops you can give to just anyone. They require a very specific type of person. Now, mutual friends have told me that you might be one of those precious few who are capable of completing a contract without question. If I'm wrong, we can leave it at that. Enjoy a drink in my spectacular company for a few minutes. We'll part ways with the understanding that this meeting never happened. And if I'm right, I might just have a gig that I could use you for. So again, user at the player interaction modes used for this again. So we can either be interested or not, but we're interested, obviously. Otherwise, there'll be a short demo. One of the many services Eckhart Security provides is as independent investigators. Sometimes that means extracting black box data, pulling data pads from wrecks, or even looking for missing persons. Different day, different job. That's what my dad always said. Sending you the details. All right, so he's gonna send us these out. Let's check out what the mission is. Retrieve black box. So um, here's the mission. A government witness has been transported across the system to testify in the trial of Major Syndicate boss. When the transport was shot down, the lawyers want to prove that they were targeted by Syndicate assassins. So they're paying good money to retrieve the black box, which recorded the crime. Unfortunately, it's highly likely that if the Syndicate did organize the hit, they'll be sending some people to retrieve the black box to wipe the data, so you'll have to hurry. 
Um, all right, it's a pretty hefty contract, so it's probably pretty risky. It's also, this is actually an example of a uh, opposition mission where there'll be another group um, going for it. All right, so let's get out and... Hey, you done? Sorry about that. I had to talk to Eckhart. Eckhart. Okay, so... He just, he just gave, gave us a mission. mission. Wait, Wait, you're, you're a, guy? a guy? Yeah, why not? I wanted to try some, something different. What do you think of my look? OK, so hold on, guys. So one thing that we're going to uh, show here, and this is a feature that um, we've uh, put into the game. It's not going to be in 3.0, but it will be soon afterwards. Uh, two things. One, which is uh, Don't just stare at me. <laughs> VIP. Um, and the other is what we call that face. That is a great smile. Face over IP. So, so hold up, guys. Anyway, so we have this mission we have to do. We have to get a black box. Hey, guys, just pause for a second, please. Are, are you hearing me or not? Um, all right, so hang on a sec. We'll just hang on. hang on. Guys, can you pause? Just pause for a second. Hold. Okay, so sorry, I just we got to coordinate because we have Melissa who's down in the basement um, as another player, and we have Glenn here. So, uh, but we have what we call face over IP, which is a combination of diegetic voice over VOIP. So wherever we say like uh, Melissa, Melissa, can you back away talking, please? Right, so like I was saying, we have this mission. We gotta get a black box. It's from Daymar. It shouldn't take too long, and I know the perfect pilot for it. Can you still hear me okay? I can't hear you. What was that? I said speak up. I still hear you. Okay. So. Now, M M Melissa, can you come forward talking and then go to Glenn's right? So, after we do this mission, I need to head to Grimhex. Actually, Yella. I left my ship there. So if you don't mind, and if it's not too much trouble, I'd really appreciate it. So, if you notice, the, so it's it, so the the voice is fully diegetic. It shouldn't it's take in the too long, especially because John's a really <laughs> good pilot. <laughs> okay, you all can right. Get us anywhere. All right, uh, back to in front of Glenn, uh, Melissa, and give me a second before we go to the next stage. Um, so, so it's fully diegetic. It's in uh, the world. If it's the left, it's the, you know, you hear the voice to the left, if it's the right, you hear the voice to the right, or if you actually had 3D sound, you would hear it behind you. It, uh, you know, goes away in the distance. If you have a helmet on, it will become filtered and it will shift to calm. So that's part one. And the other part, which you've sort of seen a little bit that's happening here, is once we put that into the game, we, we sort of realize that if you don't have the face and the, uh, you know, your lips moving when you're talking, not only that, to try and sort of see more of the emotion, it feels really weird in a game that has the fidelity that starts, isn't it? So we've been working with a company called Faceware to put their live tracking SDK into our game so we can drive our head rigs. And we, we, have a, we have an advantage that we have this live rig technology that we've developed to work for Squadron 42 and that we use in the PU. And it's what drives Miles Eckhart, it's what drives all the stuff in Squadron 42, uh, what drives the shopkeepers. And the advantage of that is that it has various poses for the faces. And as long as you can decode quick enough video coming in, then you can drive uh, the facial stuff. So here we go. Yeah. Uh, 
And Melissa, do you want to pull up your debug window so they can just see it tracking on your screen? There we go. So if you can see, there's Melissa down in the basement. Uh, and <laughs> and if, yeah. And the, ni the nice thing with the tracking here is that it's really, really smart. We don't have to train it. It will recognize your face, and you just have to do one calibration looking in the center. It works with, sta it, it works with standard webcams. Uh, and uh, if you have a better webcam, it will work even better. So these ones are, are ones we'll tell you about in a little bit. Um, and then we have one, we have one more feature, because this enables because we track heads. Uh, so, uh, Glenn, maybe. Let's, let's switch to Glenn. <laughs> so let's switch to Glenn's view. And like, get a camera on Glenn. OK, and then Glenn, and Glenn's view. There we go. Now, Glenn, turn on your, your head tracking. OK, so now on top of that, it, so, So, so it essentially has the track AR functionality because we track the head as well. And uh, it's quite useful, say, when you're in a cockpit looking around for situational awareness. Uh, and also, honestly, in these sort of situations, if you want to nod your head without having to move the mouse, it's pretty good. Uh, OK, should we get back to our mission? Oh, yeah. What's, What's that our mission, mission about? about? Were you not listening? We need to get a black box at Damar. My apologies, it's just a little busy in here is all. So should we get some weapons? You're right. <laughs> it looks exhilarating in here. <laughs> Everyone's dancing. <laughs> Are we so I'm guessing we should get some weapons. Let's go. <laughs> yep. Lead the Specifically, way. the rail gun. Let's go. Dang, you want to blow some things up, don't you? Oh yeah. And so, I mean, the idea. I mean, yeah, you know, we're doing we're doing our, our silly QA banner here. But the idea is, when this feature's in, you and your friends can be running around talking to each other in the universe. Which I think here. will help because it's much better to talk rather than and type in a chat window. Oh my God. And because that it's in the universe, you can hail people nearby. You can to talk to people. So sky. yes, you could use TeamSpeak or Discord or Mumble or something like that. But it won't be diegetic, and it also it's won't quite won't allow you to sort of talk to someone you meet in a bar or have now. all the channels set up diegetically <laughs> for um, our our game and universe. So. Right, so here's an example of uh, one of the Hi. additional shops in, in. Uh, in Levski. Just, just up here. Yes, like that. And if you notice, here's one other thing, is you can actually see in multiplayer everyone using their uh, Moby Glass. So if she purchases whatever she's looking at, uh, Melissa, this is over there. The terminal was using got it? OK, I'm going to look in the back, see if this is over. I'm going to get, get me some ammo. You do that. Wow. You know it means business when it has a skull on it. Yep. It's pure evil, which is perfect. You're scary. You finished back there? Yep. Got some other stuff, too. You all, you set, all set, too? Oh, yeah. yeah. We just got a few new items. Great, Great. let's so go. make sure to check them out. Nah, I'm good. good. Ladies first? Okay. okay, so, so if we're going over to Daymar, we're going to need a pilot. Yep, yep. Hi, 
I already told you. John. John. Who is he again? He's a guy, He's a guy I used to do some missions, missions with back, back, back in the day. day. He has, he has a, a constellation. The yeah, Achilles specifically. Mm. You can transport, transport things, things really, really easily. easily. So, uh, what are we doing? We need to get, need to get, get some, some ship items. items. Dumbbell's Depot. Depot. If you don't mind, anyway. How do you buy it John's yourself? John's not expecting us for a little while. Hi. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with. What was that, Glenn? Sorry, I cut you off. Oh, no, I was just listening to the woman. Oh, don't talk to them. They just try to sell you things. <laughs> um, so anyway, so this, you know, Dumpers Depot is on Levski. There's, uh, there'll be several other shop item shops in 3.0 where you can buy various things like shield generators, coolers, power plants, uh, and certain ones to upgrade your ships to make them better because we have different grades of equipment with item 2.0. Um, so, uh, and you'll be able to buy ship weapons and also um, at the various admin desks, Glenn. there's a commodity kiosks and stuff. Are you ignoring me? Just had a few new items <laughs> in, so make sure to check them out. All right, should we, should we go? <laughs> well, anyway. yeah, we should probably go. Yeah, I'm just wasting time here. I'm already Man, done. you have no patience. Patience? What is that? Exactly. Move it, you. You know, by saying that, it's a bit hypocritical, don't you think? So I'm thinking, we get to the top lock. Take the rover, and we drive it to John. Sounds like a plan. Because I'm not walking on Daymar. I hate sand. I've never been to Daymar. There's sand. Everyone. So I've heard. Do you think there will be a sandworm there? Not another word. That would be awesome. There's a few in danger. Don't be scared, Glenn. I'll protect you. I just bought a railgun. I don't doubt <laughs> So we're going to head to the upper area of Levski, which is a, a totally new um, area. And it's where you connect to the outside and also the garages. So we just got to go up one more level. It's uh There we go. Nice right. jacket by the way. Oh, thanks. Okay. So here we are on the very upper level. All uh, right. So I will get into my suit and you yeah, no worries. So Glenn's going to go up to the uh, vehicle valet station, and this is where you summon your um, vehicle. So in this case, a rover to the uh, garage. But if you had a sh ship, it would be to the hangar or the landing pads. And this works in concert with the air traffic control system, the ATC system, that is also new to 3.0, because now there'll be lots no. of players and landing zones. We don't want people to just 
hog a landing pad and ruin it for everyone else. So you have to request a landing spot. You get given it. You've got to land in it within a certain period of time. When it landed there, your ship gets taken into the sort of big ship storage of whatever the landing zone, and then you call it back up view, view, uh, through vehicle valet, uh, which is what we just did for the rover, and it will be in a garage because with landing zones that actually are connected to a moon or a, in this case an asteroid planetoid uh, or I'm a regular planet, up. you'd have I'm one. Ready to go. Um, so here we are. We're getting uh, dressed up. So outside of uh, Levski and Delamar, there is absolutely no atmosphere, so we better put a spacesuit on. Putting a tasty blue and white number explorer outfit, which is new for 3.0, as is uh, what Melissa will be wearing. <laughs> well, he's got a helmet on, but um, and also you'll be able it's, it's uh, you'll be able to save out uh, your predefined loadout. So you know whatever you want to call it, your Sunday best. But it's looking quite quite dapper Loud there. And clear. Yep. So now you'll notice his, the, vo the voice is filtered because it's over comms in the helmets. AI wandering around here, what's happening? Um, so let's go out, the garages are to the right. We can see Melissa's actually getting into one of the rovers. Uh, but let's just take a look. So we're outside in this massive asteroid field, which is really quite uh, great. So we've done a fair amount on the space landscaping in 3.0. Um, so one other thing, uh, Glenn, do you want to pull up your, uh, your Moby? Look at, our, look at the atmosphere out here. Glenn doesn't like it when I do that because this is this can be quite risky. He's died a few times when we did the run-throughs for the press. Um, so as you can see, there's zero uh, atmosphere out there. Um, so we'll just go to take his helmet off. Okay, well wait a sec. Save changes. Equip. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, do it. Save it. All right, if I left that a bit too long, we've done it, and Glenn's died. And then he has to respawn and come all the way down, which makes it a bit slower. But uh, oh. rest assured, if he took, let, let it off longer, then uh, he would uh, he would have uh, asphyxiated. <laughs> yeah, I just nearly had a total recall moment. So as you can see on our Moby Glass, the communications that we, sh that we showed no, the other way, the other view. Thank you. So we're calling. We do. For Ankar. That guy is so lazy. Ankar. This should be interesting, then. Yep. We're at Levski. Are you nearby? Yeah, I'm just pulling into Lusky now. I'll meet you with the landing pad. In fact, we can pull up the Great. where we'll he is then. in the cut in the cut constellation pool, maybe. Uh, too late, but but pull him up. Uh, so anyway, we can video. This is we showed the second we showed the Let's secondary uh, viewport and render the texture stuff. So that's an example of it. We opened up a comm channel to another player flying in his constellation over Delmar and talked to him uh, face to face, which is the reason why we were doing a lot of this secondary viewport stuff, to have video comms between players in different ships, different locations, as well as the holographic stuff that we showed. So let's go meet John. 
And as you can see, uh, Delamar's had a, a lot of work. The team in Germany, the environment team's really been working hard on it. It also uses all the most recent uh, technology improvements we've done for the planetary tech. So in any one of these views, there'll be about 100,000 uh, interest objects, so small rocks, big rocks, uh, whatever, you call them stalagmites going up? I can never remember, I think it is stalagmites going up. Uh, but you know, obviously if uh, we were on something that was a little less arid, you know, it would be different kinds of ecosystems, whether so you have forests or... Nearly hit a rock. <laughs> grass plains or mountains or hills or oceans. But, Goes. There we go. All right, and here we're coming. Here comes John in the constellation. And it's not a, just a constellation, it's actually a constellation Aquila. Up. Oh. John, John needs to, uh, yeah. John, I think you need to line up a bit better. There you go. switch to, um, there you go. So here's John lowering the, uh, the cargo bay for us. Parking these things is uh, quite the challenge. You want John's view picture in picture, don't you, Paul? Let's take off, guys.
So, as you can see, Delamar's gotten a lot prettier since we showed it last year. You get a bit more of a, a view of like the uh, craters and stuff on the other side. It's just a left see a bit. Down, I guess the pit, pits pull out. Yeah. So Delamar is probably one of the smallest of the uh, planetoids we have. It's probably about, uh, I think it's about maybe 200 kilometers in diameter. So it's a lot smaller than the moons. So when we get to the moons, you'll sort of see the difference, but it's uh, essentially a quite large asteroid. And uh, just going to get far enough away from, and as you can see, the space landscaping is uh, much better than it was in 2.6. If you want to look down, we see the big crater, can you? Uh, yeah. So you can, yeah, there you go. And the crater to that left, you can see in there, I think the entirety of Skyrim fits inside there. So, this is one of our smallest little uh, planetoids. Um, good. <laughs> wow. Now we're heading to Daymar. So you can see uh, Crusader actually off to the right as we head up on Daymar. All right, back in business. As you can see, uh, by the way, Daymar is much larger than Delamar. I think it's uh, uh, maybe a thousand or so kilometers in diameter. Good job, John. How are you doing? John, what's your speed going down? John, the view is sound. Don't have a break, sit down until after they've jumped.
Magic. Whoa, watch out. That's well, just a sink it's a sink issue. It takes a second to sink it up. Speed run anymore. We're back where we were. Let's look out there. Oh, 
You're looking off. Oh. You gotta re you got remember, you're, you're always prime time. Hopefully. They lost their ride. Glad you're gonna have to call for help.
Have we called for help? That's a no. Sayonara, sucker. Hey guys, I think it's time to call for some help. No, these are the these are gladiators from the Idris, by the way. So, <laughs> you know what she is. All right, let's bring it out. Come on then. 
Just close the door on your way out. So as you can see, the address is uh, pretty large. <laughs> Interesting position. Good, but so not it's that the good. first working capital ship that we've got in the game. I'm disappointed. <laughs> hey, Sam. Take your rail gun off. Right. Take your rail gun off and see the captain. Yay. All right, Rover, join me on the bridge.
so. Hello!
Right, it's a high degree of difficulty. We'll see. Exit the exit the ship. Okay. Uh -huh. 